Welcome to day two of the annual meeting. We're going to go ahead and call this year's annual business meeting to order. Thank you all for joining us this morning. You can access the business meeting agenda by going to the bit.ly link on your screen or uh, checking out the chat box. It is also posted there, bit.ly forward slash S-G-A-B-I-Z and the word agenda. Thanks, Catherine. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to type them into the chat or the Q&A and our amazing meeting facilitators will help me make sure that they are addressed. I am going to kick off this meeting with a recap of some of the important work your board has accomplished this year and then hand it over to the board members for their individual reports. So as I mentioned in my opening remarks, this year's board work began with a strategic planning survey and a board member retreat, which took place uh, in the before times back in January at the Georgia Archives. And we will talk a little bit more about that later. This year, I set four presidential goals and soon added a fifth goal of responding adeptly to the COVID-19 pandemic and continuing to advocate for the rights of archival workers. So to that end, we formulated our pandemic response plan, which included a listing of archives around the state that were closed to the public or operating under new restrictions. We created a pandemic specific resource list for archival workers. We issued a strong statement on the closure of archives and hosted weekly virtual coffee breaks through the earliest days of the pandemic. As president, I also co-wrote a letter of support for federal COVID-19 relief funding for cultural heritage organizations alongside the presidents of the Georgia Library Association and the Georgia Library Media Association. Beginning in March, your annual uh, meeting planning committees were meeting with the leadership team to determine an early strategy forward for this conference. And I am proud to say that because of their swift and decisive action, SGA did not lose a single dollar as a result of changes to our contract with the Jekyll Island Club Resort. On June 3rd, the board voted to adopt the salary transparency statement and to endorse the SAA Council's statement on Black Lives and Archives. On August 25th, the board approved a proposal to offer this year's virtual meeting for free to all SGA members and at a vastly reduced cost to non-members. And in September, we issued a statement on the passing of Dr. Gracie. The SGA board approved and sought ratification for four amendments to the bylaws, which included the creation of the vendor coordinator role assumed by Christina Zayman, the adjustment of term lengths and the creation of the treasurer ex officio role so that we always have two financial officers available to conduct SGA business. A merger between the Outreach Committee and the Georgia Archives Month Committee so that their work may be more aligned with our overall advocacy efforts. And finally, a change to the term length for the RAC liaison to be more in line with RAC's own requirements. There are many other accomplishments that I would be thrilled to share with you all, but I will let the individual board members and committee chairs make those announcements. For brevity's sake, reports are going to be limited to two minutes each. And for additional details about committee work, you can see the links to their full reports on the agenda. So uh, right now I am going to hand it off to Vice President and Membership Committee Chair, Holly Croft. Holly, are you available? I'm here. <laughs> Hello, awesome. everyone. So this has been an eventful year. Um, we have welcomed 38 new members since January 1st to SGA. Um, we had originally, back in the before times, um, planned to continue tabling and allied organizations um, to outreach to folks who may have an interest in SGA um, and were not aware that you don't have to be an archivist to be in SGA. Um, however, the pandemic has cut down significantly on that, but that also cut down on our expenditures significantly. Um, as you can see in my report, we have um, we started looking at dues um, and have tabled that discussion, um, but it has to do 
completely with the fact that um, your annual dues plus our meeting registration for normal meetings, in-person meetings, um, doesn't cover the cost of the meetings. Um, so that's a, something we'll revisit later, not now. Um, this is just not the time. Um, I was thrilled to get to work with several other committees who are um, changing some of the work that they are doing um, to make it um, more accessible and more robust. And I am super excited to um, let them share with you in their reports what came of those discussions. Um, this has been a really neat year. Um, as far as the folks that we are working with on this board, they're awesome um, and it's an honor to serve with them. I would like to turn it over at this point to um, our past president and nominating committee chair, Shawnee Moraine. Thank you, Holly. Good morning, everyone. The nominating committee this year brought to a close the 2017-2020 strategic plan goal to engage and recruit diverse leadership in SGA. Despite COVID, um, many members reconsidering commitments during this time, those taking on new ed editorial projects, even some pursuing uh, doctorate degrees and embarking on board service and allied organizations and associations, we were able to recruit a um, full board and, um, and at least one candidate for each position that was open. A special thank you to our nominating committee members, Fiji Hall and Tiffany Atwater Lee, who championed on um, through sickness and transitioning back to the office to recruit uh, the 2021 leadership. Uh, points of pride for the committee include um, recruiting a full editorial board for the Provenance Journal. Um, one thing that we'd like to apologize for is um, the ballot measure you all would have seen earlier this week. We sent a correction to the um, original survey monkey that asked for you all to vote for the annual program assistant chair and local arrangements chair. Um, we plan to announce those election results along with the full um, elected positions after the virtual meeting in mid-November to give the membership ample time to cast votes. Thank you all for um, your service and your, your continued support of SGA and willingness to continue on this adventure with us with a new strategic plan in 2021. And now I'll turn it over to our treasurer, Rosemary Kimball. Thank you very much. Can everyone hear me? All right. Um, hello, everybody. It's been a little bit of a busy year with the treasurer role. Um, we did have to do some revision, um, but I will get to that quickly. Um, for the budgets, the general account as of November 2nd, we had $2,638.20. The money market account had $75,354.17. And the PayPal account uh, was $199.44. Uh, primary activities for the year, we worked with the chairs of the different committees to verify annual bills and create SOPs of bills for future treasurers um, as we found some hiccups and just to smooth things out in the future. I worked with the president of the board to revamp the treasurer position with the approval of the members to provide some better oversight and consistency um, for this position. and. Uh, we worked on transitioning to a budget uh, line system for better tracking of um, what each committee spends and some ac and accountability and worked up on cleaning up and correcting uh, any lingering SGA invoices and things that were hanging out there from the last year. Um, we also, if you look at the um, profit and loss statement, uh, for the year, you will see the new design as we uh, redesign the budget that it lines out committee uh, at committees at the top um, for our budget areas and where expenses are so we can track better where we're spending the most money for SGA and where we're getting the most income in SGA so that we um, just know what we need to tweak and what things we might need to amend as the years go by. So um, it just helps us overall know what we're doing and where it's going. Um, and I appreciate, like I said, Angela said earlier, uh, adding the new ex officio role for the treasurer. That was a big change this year. And basically that means there will always be three people working the treasurer, two of them, the ex officio and the current treasurer 
um, running things and helping train the new assistant treasurer coming in so that there is always at least two people who fully know the treasurer role to help with anything that is going on and to help with the assistant treasurer to learn the ropes. So there is not somebody who's dangling out there and doesn't really know what they're doing when they step into the treasurer role. Um, this uh, fixes kind of a gap that there always seemed to be where there was a year where somebody was all by themselves and it was a little overwhelming for the person, uh, which um, will no longer happen and um, look forward to the next year. And that is all and I forget who I'm transitioning to. I apologize, Angela. Uh, we'll hand it over to James Irby, our archivist. We'll come back around to you, James. All right, so we'll move forward with uh, Catherine. Great, thank you. I won't spend a lot of time describing what the program committee has done this year. Um, I'm the program chair, uh, uh, but you are all experiencing the results of our work this week. I will share a couple of highlights though. Our biggest accomplishment has been putting together a full conference with dozens of presenters, even after we had to scrap our initial plans. Um, thanks to the program team's dedicated research and problem solving, we really didn't have to scale back much at all. Um, another highlight has been working more directly with some of our presenters, particularly students, to develop their initial proposals into strong presentations. To give you a brief overview of our responsibilities, the program committee plans essentially all of the content for the annual meeting. We chose this year's conference theme, invited the keynote speaker, created and distributed a call for proposals, reviewed and made decisions about proposals, created a schedule and program booklet, and coordinated with all the presenters. We meet and work together throughout the year. The average time commitment is about five hours a month, but that varies depending on the time of year and the committee member's particular role. We are starting to build our team for next year, and we really benefit from having a variety of organization types and roles and career stages represented on the committee so that we can plan conferences that will meet the needs of all of SGA's members. So if any of the following descriptions sound like you, you would be a great program committee chair, assistant chair, or member. So please consider getting involved. Um, you have strong opinions about conference planning or creative ideas about how to shake up the traditional approach. You want to find archivists across the state and beyond who are doing really important transformative work and invite them to share that with this community. You want to help students and new professionals start building their profile by presenting about their experiences and insights, or you find it really rewarding to work behind the scenes doing careful planning and preparation that allows others to come together and join an event. Um, if any of that sounds like you, let me know and stay tuned for information about how to volunteer. Thank you. Thank you so much, Catherine. Uh, we'll go ahead with uh, Virginia Engel, Local Arrangements Committee Chair. Oh. Hello, guys. Um, so I do have dogs running around. I apologize if y'all hear jingling in the background. Um, so yes, I am the Local Arrangements Chair. I helped with all of the logistics, the behind the scenes that helped make this virtual conference possible. Now, this year was a very interesting one um, because I had to do the planning for the in-person one and midstream, um, midstream change to the virtual uh, conference. Um, so if you're someone who really enjoys logistics, if you're really good at um, you know, connecting different people, um, this is gonna be a position that you would really enjoy. Um, I had to talk to caterers, um, uh, find venues, negotiate contracts, um, basic event planning. So that was really cool. Um, as far as the virtual conference goes, um, my favorite part was actually um, reaching out to a lot of different uh, places around Georgia to come up with some really awesome giveaways. Um, so things to think about. For this conference, we actually had a grand total of 206 registrants this year. Um, to give you a sense of what we usually end up with, um, it's usually over just over 100, about 110 to 120 um, attendees. Um, so we did really well there. Um, we actually had 145 members register for free. Um, and we actually managed to stay under budget this year. Um, with our total income being about 620. Um, and we only spent about $280 for this meeting. So um, 
I think that's a huge success. So thank all of you guys for um, making that possible. And I wanna give a big shout out to my assistant chair and our committee members who are helping me uh, actually run this virtual uh, meeting this year. I could not have done it without all of you guys and um, the program committee. We've been going back and forth um, daily to make this work. So thank you guys so much, big team effort. Um, I will pass it off to Alex. Yes, Alex McGee. Thanks, Virginia. Um, so I am the administrative assistant. Um, generally, if you are renewing your membership, you are a new member, you have likely interacted with me. Um, I also deal with the listserv. So um, part of my job has also been responding to listserv issues. Um, very quickly, our current active membership uh, on my report, it was 257 members. That number is a little higher because we did get a couple more renewals and new members just ahead of the conference this week. Um, so I think we're now in the 260s. Uh, just like high level activities, obviously responding to member issues and questions related to um, their memberships uh, and payment, um, working with Rosemary to make sure that those checks get recorded that I receive in the mail, um, responding to listserv issues and um, a huge kudos to our webmaster, Megan, who uh, was very helpful in dealing with a lot of the technical aspects of listserv issues. Uh, certainly I am in debt to her. <laughs> um, and then thank you to James Irby. Uh, he has great, I'm very gracious, uh, grateful to him. He has graciously checked the mailbox for us in Decatur um, as I am currently located in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and he forwards the checks to Rosemary, our treasurer. So thank you to him. Um, and then I guess that is all for me. And so I will be passing it on to Tamara. Hello, everyone. Sorry for the delay. I, I was looking at an old draft of the agenda. So um, the membership, the mentoring program committee is responsible for coordinating, administrating, and um, uh, creating awareness about the mentorship opportunities within SGA. Um, <clears throat> this year, however, it's been slightly different. Uh, we, we decided, my uh, co-partner and I, Laura Starrett, we decided that we wanted to look at the program and, and consider ways to revise it, to kind of update it, and to add new programs. So. Um, this year, we have worked with the membership committee, outreach, and other committee leadership to come up with three new programs um, that we're hoping to launch in some fashion next year. Um, those include a uh, leadership shadow program, an archives advisory program, and various um, regional networking opportunities for folks. We had a session on it the other day and got some more feedback for that. Uh, we've also updated our website and some of our forms. Um, the thing I really love about working on SGA committees, and really it, it, all committees are wonderful to work on because they, first of all, they allow you to, to work very close and get to know other, <clears throat> excuse me, other members of SGA. And it really allows you to um, see how you, your talents can best serve the organization. Um, maybe you, you're good at, at, at creating new ideas or maybe you're really good at forms and you wanna, you know, you, you're itching to update something. And that's great. That's the kind of exciting, we need all of that in SGA. Um, you know, we're all volunteers. We all have very busy lives. And it's just so gratifying to see a community that comes together and, and works together. So um, I would certainly encourage you to consider the, the men, working with the mentoring program, but really I would say any of the committees are wonderful to work, uh, work for and with, and it's a great way to get involved with SGA. Thank you. So I think I'm up, um, uh, Heather Oswald, uh, 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 editor of Provenance. Um, some of the highlights of our work this year is um, we published the final printed issues for institutional subscribers in April. That was volume 36, number one. Um, we have another issue that will be coming out at the end of the year. Uh, we were 
able to work with our colleagues at um, KSU to apply Creative Commons licensing to all of our articles um, available on the Digital Commons platform, which is very exciting um, and will be excellent moving forward. Um, and we're also really excited to announce that we have just launched an e-commerce site with our printer Sheridan, um, which is making issues from 2011 forward available for purchase. Um, so that now provides an option for our members and readers who prefer a physical journal as opposed to a um, the digital digital online um, version. And we're also hoping to reinstitute institutional subscriptions, which ended at the, um, the beginning of this year because we moved online. Um, I do want to thank uh, Shawnee and the entire nominating committee because as she mentioned, there is uh, new leadership coming into provenance and thank everyone. Um, I've been involved in some capacity with SGA for about seven years and it's been an absolutely wonderful experience. And so I really look forward to what new leadership of provenance will take on with the journal. I do want to remind everyone that the journal is always seeking submissions, um, including ideas for reviews, case studies, and full-length articles, and the editorial team would be happy to talk through ideas and give um, anyone who's interested advice on the publications process. Provenance is also looking to expand its ranks of peer reviewers. Um, if you're interested, contact us at provenance.soga.org and let us know about your particular areas of expertise or scholarship. Um, we wanna have a diverse group of reviewers who can provide critical feedback for our authors. It's one of the most important things um, that we do uh, in Provenance. And it's a wonderful way to contribute and learn more about the publications process as well. Um, that's all I have. I think I'm next. Uh, I'm Allison Reynolds. I'm the communications director. So this year we published the annual magazine in February of 2020 and we'll be looking to the next magazine coming out around January, February 2021. Um, and Brittany is the assistant communications director who will be editing the final version, but we'll, we should both be soliciting uh, articles and any information for that magazine uh, coming up around November, December to just start drafting it together. So if there is anything that you think is newsworthy, um, awards, maybe grant projects that you've been working on, send an email to us at communications.soga.org um, and we'd be happy to include that in the magazine. One of the big accomplishments this year that I feel rather proud of is moving the SGA blog from Blogger to WordPress. If you saw the old blog, it was possibly up to 15 years old. It was very um, old and had limited functionality. And so we managed to migrate it into WordPress where we have a lot more freedom with design and adding different widgets to make it look um, a lot more modern. So if you haven't looked at that yet, check it out. It's just sogablog.org. Um, and it's also linked through the main SGA site. Um, this year we published 31 blog posts between both of the blogs, um, mostly promoting digital projects, community events, professional development opportunities, awards and grants. Um, we did a couple of pre-conference events for this program. So thank you to those of you who participated in those. It was a lot of fun. Um, a lot of what I do in this position is managing the social media accounts. So you probably see the monthly emails you get from me about different themes. Um, so thanks to everybody who's submitted over the year. And I know some people have submitted some food images for November, so I'll be publishing those. And to give you a head start, a December is going to be holiday themed. So any kind of holidays, um, get those prepared for December. Um, overall, we've published 117 posts across all three platforms this year. And in my report, there's a few light statistics about that. Um, but we always accept anything you'd like to share with us, uh, if it's photographs, projects, grant, uh, grants coming up, or it's anything like that, feel free to send it along. And that's all for my report. And so I will pass it over to Megan. Good morning, everyone. I'm Megan Kirkhoff. I'm the current SGA website manager. In this role, I maintain our website at soga.org, the program Wild Apricot. I also maintain our domain and posting server space. Other duties in this role include updating the website as requested, making sure the website has a good look and limbs grammar for health issues. We have Megan, as it is, your audio is um, flickering in and out. It is a little challenging to hear you. I think we might need to come back to you. It is, I, 
I'm not able to catch everything that you're saying and I wanna make sure that everyone can hear all the awesome work you did this year. We will come back around to you and um, it may just be like a weird momentary blip of, of internet connectivity, but we'll come back around to you um, in just a few minutes. Okay, I am going to hand it off to um, Becky Sherman, our Education Committee Chair. Hey everyone. Um, so the Education Committee is responsible for planning and promoting workshops and other educational opportunities for members. Typically the committee plans three workshops each year. Um, unfortunately, this past spring, we had an in-person workshop on copyright that had been scheduled for March that we ended up having to cancel. Um, but we're hopeful that we're gonna be able to reschedule this as a virtual workshop, hopefully this coming winter or spring. Um, but one good thing about this year is it did give us the opportunity to finally experiment with virtual workshops, which is something that the education committee has been wanting to do for several years. So last week we hosted two pre-conference virtual workshops that went really well, uh, one on critical race theory and one on managing using the Tillmore process. And thank you so much to the committee for all of their hard work this year as we were um, flying by the seat of our pants a little bit and changing plans along the way. Um, so the education committee is looking forward to next year and exploring more options for virtual workshops and hopefully in-person workshops at some point too. So if you have suggestions for workshops or other types of programs that you would like to see, please consider joining the committee and contributing your time and ideas. So thank you. Thanks, Becky. Um, we will go over to uh, Jessamine now and we'll come back to um, Megan and James uh, at the end. Okay. Hello. Um, so the scholarship committee oversees the awarding of all SGA scholarships. Uh, we manage and evaluate submissions and communicate with the appropriate officers and committees about our selections. Uh, this committee, committee met once in February via Zoom, but all other communication was via email with motions being voted on through doodle polls and evaluations being performed via Google Forms. Um, committee members were divided into five award subcommittees uh, with the first uh, assignments being made to Carol Hart, Brenda S. Banks, and Anthony Dees and then later assignments being made later in the year so that members not able to participate on the original subcommittee could be reassigned to later committees. Um, so that's, I think that's probably what we'll do next year as well. We updated the scholarship submission form on Google Drive and we also added a Google form that was used by committee members to score each submission just to make that process a little bit easier. Um, and these forms are all organized in the scholarship committee Google Drive so that they can be duplicated by future committees to reduce the workload. We also voted on a design for a certificate and uh, we created that in Adobe Spark. And um, we did this because we wanted to create more incentive to apply for the final three awards. Um, the design is gonna be available by the end of the year as an editable PDF. Uh, and you'll see what it looks like later when the scholarships are announced. We received 10 submissions for Carol Hart and uh, two submissions for Brenda S. Banks. And we unfortunately didn't receive any submissions for the later awards in the year. The other, I believe it's four. Uh, we also didn't organize an auction this year. However, uh, we discussed using online platforms like Twitch for fundraising events in the future. And I think that's worth examining. Great, and I will go ahead and give the floor to Katie. Wow. Hello. Oh, can you hear me? It's a little muffled, but we can hear you. Okay, let me adjust this. My apologies. That's hi. Much better. Um, hi. So I did. I was head of outreach this year, and and just a big shout out first off to my assistant manager Becca Brown, who has helped to keep me sane during this whole time. And also um, big shout out to Angela and just everyone that I've worked with in communications. Um, this year was, was challenging to say the least, but um, initially we had planned to get together every two to three months um, at different locations uh, throughout Metro Atlanta. Unfortunately, we only did the first one, um, but we had a really good time. And then we also um, tested out doing a virtual meetup this year 
with doing um, trivia games or just games in general. And I think that went pretty well. I would say our biggest accomplishment was working with GAM so we could uh, combine our two um, committees and hopefully make it a powerhouse for next year. Um, I look forward to, to uh, hearing what they will be doing. If you're interested in joining the um, new outreach committee um, that will be uh, put in place next year, really, if it's less than five hours a month, I think that would that's that's a lot of time. It's probably less than that. If you're interested just in engaging people, um, you have new creative ideas to uh, get people together and activities that they can do, I you would be perfect. And you know, even if in the past you felt like you haven't done much party planning, this is you can still do this. You should get involved. It's a good chance to get your feet wet. And it, it's a great time to get together with everyone and just, you know, meet up, shoot the breeze, chat, all that jazz. Um, so thank you again. Uh, I enjoyed my time and um, I will be handing this off to one second. Oh, I'm not sure who I'm going to be handing this off to. So I'm going to leave that to Angela, but you guys have a great, have a great day. Thank you, Katie. Um, next up, we have Kathy Miller, our RAC liaison. All right. Good morning, SGA members. Uh, so I will begin with some brief uh, comments on highlights from my work this year as the Regional Archival Associations Consortium Liaison, which is why we call it RAC Liaison for short. Uh, so first and foremost, shared communications that came through the RAC listserv to SGA members. So if guys saw those communications, that's why with, uh, with RAC listserv in the subject line. A um, couple of big highlights from the year um, was locally, I was having, we've been having discussions, SGA as a group with other allied Georgia library organizations about potential collaboration with uh, programming and possibly even being able to collaborate via um, with conferences and things like that. So it will be exciting to see where those conversations continue to go. Um, um, as for me personally within RAC, I became chair of the RAC advocacy subcommittee this year. So I've been um, beginning um, efforts there in promoting advocacy resources that RAC offers to regional organizations. And um, of possible interest to all SGA members is that RAC has opened up their membership um, before RAC membership was specifically only for the appointed RAC representatives or RAC liaisons for a regional org, state org, whatever the case may be. Um, but now if you have an SAA login, you can become a RAC member and you can receive those communications directly from the RAC listserv. Uh, so just wanna throw that out there to anyone who may be of interest. Um, you can contact me um, after the fact and I can let you know about the process for joining if you're interested. Um, and a brief comment on my roles, though I think it was pretty much illustrated through the task that I described that I accomplished this year. The RAC liaison works to provide communications to all of you um, about what other regional organizations are doing and um, basically acts as a bridge from SGA to all those other regional orgs so that we can learn about projects that they've got going on. And it's a great way for us to be able to learn about um, things that we might wanna take up and initiatives that we might wanna take on that we see another regional org is doing that is really cool. So uh, that's the, the brief of it. And I will pass the mic along to Georgia Archives Month Chair, Amber Moore. Hello everyone. Um, I will give you a brief overview of what I do as the Georgia Archives Month Committee Chair, um, which will be next year the subcommittee chair in outreach as Katie and Angela have already mentioned. Um, basically you're responsible for the planning, coordinating and promotion of Georgia Archives Month. Um, we do have a committee who great committee members work with us to help coordinate um, the proclamation with the governor's office and um, helping to come up with the content for our theme. Uh, this year, our theme was archives documenting time of crisis, times of crisis. Obviously we were um, greatly impacted and inspired by the pandemic. So that really um, fed into that a lot. Uh, our sponsors for this year were SGA, um, and then we were able to give uh, our $500 spotlight grant to Georgia Southern University Library. And they used that money to in part do virtual programming uh, that they held throughout the month of October. 
Uh, this year, thankfully, we had someone create our uh, poster for us pro bono, and three institutions submitted images for that. So we, you know, were able to get that up and post on the website. It's still available. Um, he also created a couple of digital banners for us, which are also available on the website, uh, which is really cool. It, it was nice to be able to focus um, more on digital content. We also created um, some sort of guides for institutions to get inspired, maybe um, include some ideas for engaging community members virtually and social media posts. Uh, so I think that that's something that we can do more going forward, even when we are able to meet back in person, um, just because I think engaging the community virtually is always gonna be a good idea. Um, so yeah, uh, that's we were obviously weren't able to do any in-person uh, events this year, um, no photo op at the governor's office, and we weren't able to do a proclamation either. So that was kind of a bummer, but you know, it was good to be able to focus on things like sort of expanding GAM in other ways. Uh, for outreach, we solicited requests for GAM events, but um, um, most institutions were not able to do in-person things this year, so we didn't get any um, of those outside of our spotlight grant winners event. Uh, we did share and repost content on our GAM accounts um, from Twitter and Facebook. And we were also worked with Angela to uh, include our information in the GPLS toolkit for public libraries, which is really great. So yeah, other than that, um, our big thing was, as Katie has already mentioned, the merger with the outreach committee. So I'm excited to see what that looks like going forward. And I encourage everyone to join the outreach committee and help promote GAM each year. So with that, I will give it over to Christina. Morning, everyone. Um, thanks for joining us. As Angela mentioned earlier in her report, this is a new role. Um, I'm the vendor coordinator now for the Society of Georgia Archivists, um, although this is, I'm in it as a temporary uh, holdover from the local arrangements committee. This came out of local arrangements, uh, usually for the annual meeting. Um, all vendor coordination comes out of that role. However, um, it is a big role and I felt that it could also support um, scholarships and other areas within SGA as a separate role um, and also to maintain some consistency with our vendors, both our um, existing and long-term uh, uh, vendors who support us and sponsor us, which is very important. Um, I noticed last year as local arrangements that they often get confused with the constant turnover uh, between committee chairs for local arrangements as to who to contact if they're interested in supporting us. So this role will provide some consistency. It'll be a three-year ex officio position, non-elected. Um, and so for this year, um, it was a little bit challenging, one, because I was um, trying to get this new role established, but two, uh, with the pandemic, a lot of our vendors are being fairly conservative um, in how they spend and focusing more on really big uh, conference attendee attendance um, and where they can hit more people and, and a little less on the smaller conferences um, because their bottom line is getting hit as well uh, as a lot of us, our budgets have, have shrunk. Um, so, I am happy to report that um, we had three full sponsors for this conference um, and we had four ad buys, which allowed us to keep this meeting at um, low or no cost, uh, no cost for our members and low cost for anybody outside of SGA. Um, if you wanna see the actual breakdown, you can click on the report in the agenda. Um, I just encourage people to please keep supporting our vendors in the sponsored breaks, um, as well as the vendors who uh, purchase ads. They do have office hours um, through the conference. It, for more information about that, it's in on page 27 of your pro program. Um, so the one thing I like about this, uh, well, there's many things I like about this role, but um, <laughs> it, it supports the annual meeting, it supports SGA, um, it allows you to build relationships with these vendors, um, which for me is really fulfilling um, to 
be able to bring in, I know last year I was able to bring in a whole bunch of new vendors as exhibitors. Um, it kind of keeps things fresh um, for, for the annual meeting, um, gives people a lot of different options when they're thinking about um, what their needs are in their own uh, institutions, because we, as we know, we're all, we all have different needs. Um, and so if you're interested, again, um, put your name forward. I believe uh, Holly has, has posted that link to volunteer. Um, and all I'm gonna say is my last statement is please stay tuned after this meeting. Um, Lucidia has a sponsored break for 30 minutes. So um, I'd appreciate uh, anybody who's willing to stick around and uh, listen to what they have to say. Thanks. All right, thank you, Christina. We are going to um, come back around now to James Irby. Irby, sorry, excuse me, our archivist. James, are you there? Uh, yes, can you hear me? We sure can. Oh, great. Thank you. Uh, I'm very sorry for my audio problems earlier. Um, hello, everyone. Good morning. Um, I'm James Irby. I'm the archivist. Um, my role is focused on uh, process, collecting and processing uh, organizational records with a special emphasis on the institutional knowledge management portion of the strategic plan. And so in there's a lot of, there's a pretty large policy and documentation infrastructure that I've been working on this year to try to um, Bring, bring some of the previous materials more in line with that plan to reflect um, a digital uh, processing and preserving born digital materials. And I've been trying to evaluate what resources are available and what we might need going forward. Um, 2020 was a difficult year. Um, the Georgia Archives, where the collection, the SGA collection is, um, uh, did have a budget impact. Um, there was a, there was an impact of budget cuts this year. So I'm trying to evaluate the resources um, at least we have a, a starting point that um, that I can use moving forward. Um, I'm I'm in the process of recruiting membership to a task force to advise me on on some of these issues, and I've been in uh, contact with the senior board membership, and I will continue that over the next few weeks uh, in preparation for um, upcoming uh, transfers from from outgoing members. So. I have a lot of tests. I'm going to do a work uh, plan, draft work plans. I have a lot that's um, that uh, is will be ready to go in the in the coming weeks and will be put into place. So I appreciate everyone, all the boards, um, uh, all their work and all the records that document that work. So I'll be in touch with them soon to um, to receive their um, uh, the records as they turn their offices over. So um, you can email me at archivist at soga.org with any questions and um, just thank you very much for um, your work on the and your participation in SGA this year. Thank you. Thank you, James. All right, and last but not least, we're going to um, kick it back around to Megan Kirkhoff, our website manager. Hello, hopefully this is better. Yes, loud and clear. Okay, great. Sorry about that. Um, so I'm Megan Kirkhoff. I'm the website manager. In this role, I maintain our website, which is at soga.org, through the program Wild Apricot. I also maintain our domain name and our web hosting and server space. Um, other duties in this role, I update the website as requested. I make sure the website is cohesive, um, fix any broken links or grammar and spelling issues. So some updates we've done this year to the website include updating the logo, and with that, um, updating the color scheme to reflect our new logo. We also updated the mentoring program pages. We've updated the publications pages, including linking to our new WordPress blog at WordPress. Um, we also created a COVID-19 resources page, and we've been updating the bylaws as approved by membership. Um, to see more of the detailed changes, you can look at my report. Um, we only had one issue this year. In April, we lost um, access to our Gmail accounts and the website stopped working. We realized this was a lapse in payment from our web hosting site at Jaguar PC. It's a payment that happens every two years, so it kind of just went unnoticed by members. Um, and so we quickly updated the payment and got everything back up and running within a week. To prevent this in the future, we updated our transfer documentation for future website managers. Um, I met with my assistant to make sure she knew about the problem. 
and we've been updating the administrative handbook to include these specific accounts. So hopefully it won't happen again in the future. Um, and to view the Google Analytics, the, this is the statistics on the visitors and users that come to our site. You can see that on my report. Um, and if you ever have any questions about the website or my role on SGA, you can email me at webmaster at sogo.org. And that's it for me. Thank you, Megan. All right. That was uh, 18 different presenters uh, with only a few minor hiccups. So thank you all for making that uh, a very smooth uh, board member report session. I wanna thank all of our 2020 board uh, members and committee members for their unwavering commitment to SGA. They have volunteered their time and their energy through this crazy year and I could not be more appreciative of their efforts. Hopefully you all as listeners found this session helpful and as a useful way to understand more about board roles. So it gives me great pleasure to now present to you another 2020 board achievement, our new 2021 through 2025 strategic plan. This plan was developed with member input and careful consideration by each member of your board and with guidance and oversight from Stephen Hauser and Andrea Jackson Gavin. Thanks in large part to the efforts of previous SGA boards and in particular, the work of 2014 president Courtney Chartier and 2015 president Sarah Quigley, we were well positioned to build off the foundational and comprehensive work accomplished during the 2015 to 2020 plan. The result is a new lightweight, nimble and outcome driven plan to carry us into 2025 a plan that is considerably more outwardly focused on advocacy, outreach, and inclusion. As you can see from the links in your agenda, there are two versions of the plan, the full 24-page document that describes the mission, the vision, the history, the planning team, and each of the four main goal areas, 12 more specific strategies, and 36 individual tactics. And then there's the briefer two-page document that reviews the mission, the vision, and the four goals. So although I won't go through every single individual tactic, I will briefly review each of the four main goal areas and those 12 strategies. So our first goal is for advocacy and leadership. Uh, we want SGA to be the collective voice for Georgia's archives and archivists and the authoritative source of information on issues impacting our profession. We've developed three strategies uh, beneath each of these goals. And the first one for goal one is to communicate and advocate on federal, state, and local legislative issues affecting archives and records. The second strategy is to address the impact of laws, policies, and trends affecting archives and libraries. And thirdly, to support initiatives that center archival work and advocate for fair wages and salary transparency. Our second goal is education and professional development. To be, we want SGA to be the professional home for Georgia's archives workers by offering robust educational leadership, educational leadership and mentorship opportunities. To do so, we will provide leadership training that supports archives professionals at all stages in their careers. We will encourage and develop future archives leaders and invest in students early career professionals and new SGA members. Our third goal is in, under inclusion and collaboration. SGA will enact plans and policies that recognize diversity as a core organizational asset that drives innovation. We will center SGA's statement on diversity and inclusion and SAA statement on black lives and archives in all aspects of our work. All SGA board members will take responsibility for diversity and inclusion measures and leadership development. We will enact programs that will build capacity for rural and independent archives and will connect with allied organizations, including archives adjacent cultural heritage, community led archives and memory keeping institutions. And finally, our fourth goal is around organizational stability ensuring member support, fiscal accountability, and the continued growth of the organization and its leaders. Firstly, we'll ensure SGA's financial fiscal sustainability and maintain the highest standards in oversight and accountability. We will continue to develop institutional knowledge management and con continuity of operations documentation. And we will invest in succession planning for future SGA leadership. 
Each of these strategies is tied to specific tactics and metrics, as well as to individual board positions. As with the previous strategic plan, board members will be asked to report on their progress meeting these goals, and revisions to the plan may become necessary as technology and strategies change. However, the four main goals as cornerstones to guide SGA's work priorities will remain unchanged. My sincere thanks to each of you for sharing your thoughts on the future of SGA and to the past and current board members for their care and attention in drafting this new plan. We are now going to transition to the award ceremony, which is always my favorite part of the SGA meeting. Traditionally, SGA's Keystone Awards are presented during the annual meeting reception and are an opportunity to mingle and celebrate. This year, we decided to forego a virtual reception, opting instead to present the awards during this time where we can all be together in a single meeting space during the day. So I hope you will raise your coffee mugs, your mugs of tea, or your glasses of water with me as we congratulate our winners. I'm going to begin by passing it off to Jessamine Swan, Chair of the Scholarship Committee. All right, um, I'll go ahead and start by talking about the Carol Hart Scholarship. Uh, the Carol Hart Scholarship is awarded to an individual employed or volunteering in a Georgia archive, to an SGA member working outside of Georgia, or to a Georgia graduate student preparing for a career in archives. The scholarship pays for the tuition for attendance at the Georgia Archives Institute, uh, which is normally held each summer in Atlanta. But since the Institute was canceled this year, the awardee will have the option of attending the Institute in 2021. So this year, Terry Lynn Hatfield was selected by the scholarship committee as the Carol Hart awardee. She holds an MLIS and informally manages the departmental archives for the Institute for Women's Studies at the University of Georgia. Caring for those materials inspired her in many ways, and she spoke passionately of how rewarding it was to be the steward for the records of the first women's department in the state of Georgia, and of how that knowledge made her, sorry, of how that uh, endeavor made her eager to enlarge her knowledge of archival studies. So the scholarship committee is uh, very proud to name Mrs. Hatfield, Miss Hatfield as this year's Carol Hart awardee. All right, uh, and Brenda S. Banks was the other one that we awarded this year. And it's awarded to an individual employed or volunteering, uh, the same as Carol Hart. Uh, the scholarship waives the registration fee for one of the spring summer series of educational workshops offered by SGA. These workshops had to be canceled this year since they occurred during the time that COVID had entirely shut everything down. Uh, however, the awardee will have the option of attending an SGA workshop in 2021. This year, Sierra King was selected by the scholarship committee as the Brenda S. Banks awardee. She's the photo archivist at the Eldridge and Kathleen Cleaver Family Photo Archive. Her goals of combining her expertise in photography with her newly burgeoning interest in archives to the end of being an advocate for her community and for black women resonated very deeply with the committee. And we're very proud to name Ms. King as this year's Brenda S. Banks awardee. Thank you so much, Jessamine, and congratulations to both of our scholarship winners this year. Now I'm going to hand it off to Heather Oswald to talk us through um, the winners of two uh, Gracie Awards this year. Heather? Yes, so as Angela mentioned, um, this year we have not one, but two Gracie Awards to give out. Um, first is the David B. Gracie II Award, which recognizes a superior contribution to provenance. The editorial board has selected uh, Sarah, Sarah Carlson, who is the Advertising and Exhibits Coordinator at the University of Texas Press, for her article, Chain of Custody, Access and Control of State Archival Records in Public-Private Partnerships, published in um, volume 36, issue one. Um, we wanna congratulate Sarah for her excellent case study on the partnership between the Georgia Archives and Ancestry.com and the implications of these types of agreements on digital stewardship, provenance, and access to cultural heritage collections. Um, secondly, uh, the SGA and Provenance Boards are honored to add a second Gracie Award this year as part of our efforts to celebrate the life and contributions of Dr. Gracie. This one-time $500 prize serves as a tribute to his extraordinary impact. To honor his dual role as a scholar and teacher, we solicited recommendations from library and archives educators on articles published in Provenance that they believe have enduring relevance and which they have used in their own teaching. Faculty from around the country responded, selecting 
uh, persuasion, promotion, perception, untangling archivists' understanding of advocacy and outreach, published in volume 31, issue one, and written by Jeremy Brett, associate professor and curator of the science fiction and fantasy research collection at Texas A&M, and Jasmine Jones, who is head of processing for library special collections at UCLA. Brett and Jones' submission was praised by one respondent as longitudinal evidence of archivist advocacy efforts, allowing refinement of those practices while articulating a mutual role for outreach and education for new and veteran professionals alike. This article is a wonderful example of the journal's national reach and influence. Moving forward, we hope that provenance can continue to fulfill the vision, the vision set out for it by Dr. Gracie when he founded the journal in 1972. Thank you so much, Heather, and congratulations to both of our Gracie Award winners. It is my honor to now present the President's Award. We received numerous nominations this year, and I want to thank each of you who took the time to consider and write heartfelt statements about the archives champions in your area. I'm pleased to announce the recipient of the 2020 President's Award, Dr. Hector Montford, Assistant Professor of History at the College of Coastal Georgia in Brunswick, Georgia. Dr. Montford was nominated by Jerry Mullis, Director of the Marshes of Glen Library System, which covers Brunswick and St. Simons Island. Dr. Montford's resume demonstrates his use of, passion for, and commitment to archives, as well as the ways in which he facilitates his students' hands-on experience with the foundational archival concepts of preservation and intellectual control. In her nomination letter, Jerry writes, it is obvious from his work that history and especially preserving history is dear to his heart. But Hector has taken this one step further for our community by instilling love and respect for the past in his students. His work with the internship coordinator for American studies at, C at CCGA has been able to accomplish a multitude of projects in a very short amount of time. One of these has been helping archive materials located within the heritage room at the Brunswick Library. This space was a beautiful cacophony of priceless gems hidden in a mountain of debris. Due to Hector's persistence, he ignited his students to handle a task that even librarians shuddered against completing. This seemingly thankless job has single-handedly saved pieces of Glynn County history. Hector's innate drive to preserve and teach others to preserve goes deeper than saving a public library collection. This summer, he began conducting oral history interviews to collect stories from the African-American community in Brunswick, specifically focusing on events and experiences in the 1950s to the 1970s. Much of this history in our area does not exist on paper, but thanks to him, it will now. And like the Heritage Room Project for the library, he incorporated internship work into the project. His students have now achieved firsthand experience of what it was like for the African-American community in a deep South town during Jim Crow and civil rights. And of course, he is sharing the compl completed work with the public library to keep these precious memories conserved for the next generation. These two small paragraphs merely highlight a lifetime of preservation work Hector has packed into his short time on the Georgia coast. Nothing stops his passion, not even a global pandemic. Um, we were fortunate to uh, receive a, a recorded thank you from uh, Dr. Montford. So I'm going to play that and then we will um, rack up, wrap up our a business meeting. Hi, everybody. My name is Dr. Hector Montford, and I'm an assistant professor of history at the College of Coastal Georgia. And I'm sending you guys this uh, video because I just found out this week that I won the Society of Georgia Archivist President's Award for this year, which is fantastic because I never won anything, quite frankly. And uh, to, to win something like this, to be nominated and win something like this is just beyond belief for me. Um, it's an honor to have been nominated. Uh, it's great to have won. A surprise, definitely, but definitely an honor and great to have won along the way. Um, and I wanted to take this time to thank you guys for that, that specific honor. Um, as a historian, I rely on archives and archivists for, for, for my work, basically, for my research and for the work that I do. And I, I really understand and appreciate you know, the, the role and goal of an archivist and in archives uh, in the community, you know, to preserve records, to provide access to those materials, um, and to promote history. And so I really appreciate what this field does, not only for history itself, but for the community as a whole. So it's great to be associated with all of you uh, in that regard. 
And it's also great to know that that the work that we've done down here, uh, m myself and my students especially, that we've done to help preserve records locally and preserve history locally, uh, means something. And we think you know that it means something regardless because people need to know more about their history, especially their local history. But to be recognized at the state level like this for what we've done uh, is really just uh, fantastic. So I know you guys have a conference uh, planned out for this week, and I don't want to be you know taking center stage any more than I already have. So uh, again, I just want to thank you guys for the nomination. I really want to thank um, the Marshes of Glenn Library for for nominating me uh, to begin with, uh, Jerry Mullis, the director. Thank you so much for that. And uh, thank you guys for considering me and then awarding me with this certificate. So it really does mean a lot. Um, and I'm very, very thankful for it. It's gonna go on a wall in here somewhere, I promise, uh, as part of the decorations. I'm not sure where yet, but it'll be uh, front and center when it's all said and done. So once more, thanks again and enjoy your conference. Hi, everybody. My name is Dr. Okay, just had to figure out how to minimize that screen. All right, um, congratulations to Dr. Montford and to all of our winners. Uh, these scholarships and awards are a key way SGA recognizes all of the achievements both within and outside of the profession. Please remember the leaders, supporters, and advocates for your archives uh, come our call for nominations next year. Hi, and everybody. My next name is- year, Whoops, there we go. Signups are still open for 2021 SGA committees. Please click on the link in your agenda to add your name. Many hands make light work and we are going to need all the hands we can get. So please sign up out of an abundance of goodwill, sign up for the professional brownie points, sign up for the camaraderie and networking, but please sign up. If you have questions about board positions or would like more information, please feel free to join the SGA board member Slack channel during today's lunch break. And that is everything for me. I will just check in real quick with Catherine and Virginia to see if there are any final announcements before we head on over to our break. All right, looks like we are all good. Thank you all. Thank you for joining us. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your conference. Take care.